Sir Geoffrey Clifton Brown. Uh, for allowing me to take part in this uh, adjournment debate, which I will name in the honour of our late colleague, Sir David Amos. I uh, participated in these debates for uh, many, many years with him, and indeed I participated in an interview with him three weeks before he was sadly killed to promote his book, so uh, he was a great friend. I also would like to pay great friend, great tribute to my right on and gallant friend sitting in front of me, the member of Beckenham. Uh, this House has got the huge benefit that he didn't suffer the same fate of his driver and his interpreter in that car. And what de his speech demonstrated, I think, loud and clearly to the House and to the nation, how important it is to have colleagues in this House who've got different skills and different knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that re reflected well in his speech. Uh, of course. If I may very briefly add to that. We're all aware that the member for Beckenham did great service to his country in Bosnia, for which he was awarded, the, quite rightfully, the DSO. He was far too modest to mention that, but I do think, nonetheless, Mr Deputy Speaker, it's worth putting that on the record. Yeah. 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 I'm grateful to my honourable friend for adding to my tribute. Um, this, morning, this afternoon, Mr Deputy Speaker, I want to raise two issues two urgent issues relating to shooting and farming, and in doing so I need to declare my interest as Chairman of the APG for Shooting and Conservation, Vice President of Basque and a shoot partner, also as a farmer relating uh, 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 as in my declarations. I very much regret to have the necessity to raise DEFRA's unexpected policy change depriving shoots, releasing gay birds on special protection areas with a 500 metre buffer zone of the benefit of a general uh, license 43 and forcing each of them to apply to National England who will then advise ministers on the signing off on each individual license to release game birds. Please I, I ask the House to bear with me and they'll see the importance of that decision. This decision taken by DEFRA in the full knowledge of the shooting calendar and communicated to shoots even though birds had already been ordered and were about to be released has caused chaos around the country and has resulted in an animal welfare crisis, threatened redundancies, shoot closures, bankruptcies of rural businesses. In short, this is a disaster for rural affairs. When something similar happened in the spring of 2019, after a legal challenge from anti-shooting pressure groups, Natural England revoked the general licences to control pest birds, just at the point where protection given by shoots to ground nesting birds, laying and fledgling birds, was critical for their survival was a similar outcry from Schutz. The then Secretary of State for DEFRA, the Right Honourable Member for Surrey Heath, reacted very differently. He took over Natural England's functions and issued new general licence, which allowed the necessary pest control. He was a minister who knew what was right and wasn't overawed by Natural England. What a difference in the handling of this today. In this case, it is unacceptable for ministers to treat stakeholders as mushrooms, promising them consultation and engagement, accepting the need for early licence and then keeping them in the dark. This is precisely what happened, Mr Speaker, in this case. Despite earlier promises, shooting organisations were given only a few days' notice of a significant policy change with the feeble excuse that circumstances did not permit consultation. <coughs> Ministers knew that game birds were ordered suppliers order supplies in November and December before release in the following June and July. This was contained in their evidence in the judicial review in the courts in 2019, so they should have known their decision would, would leave shoots in an impossible position, expecting imminent delivery of thousands of birds which couldn't be released, couldn't be culled and with very limited market for resale. Birds over nine weeks old cannot be kept in pens because otherwise they, they attack each other. Hence the animal welfare crisis to which DEFRA, DEFRA has offered no solutions yet. Shoots have been refused licences with the states threatened with bankruptcy, military shoots which provide social benefits for veterans being shut down and shoots with excellent conservation credentials over decades being refused even though they protect rare and magnificent bird species which, other, which, in, which inhabit their land. Who will protect these species if the gamekeeper has been made redundant? 
Meanwhile, the application process for licence is in an almighty mess, with decisions delayed, applications muddled and lost, shoots left waiting for weeks for a decision, and those that have been given licences, that are, which, which in some cases are restricted to unworkable and increasingly bizarre restrictions. It is simply not possible to keep birds ready to be, to be released now until September, and it's impossible to get birds in any numbers at that date, and unethical to shoot such young birds when the season starts. Why has this happened? DEFRA's justification for this disaster is the prevention of avian influenza, AI. But that justification, I would say to the House, is deeply flawed. No game bird has ever been released when affected with AI. There is no record of any wild bird being affected by the release of game birds. Outbreaks of AI in the UK do not correlate to the areas in which game birds are released and do not occur when game birds are released. The Netherlands has similar levels of AI, and yet they have no game birds release. This is not a game bird issue. The Shadow Habitats Regulation Assessment provided by Natural England to ministers in January 23 <coughs> has not been shared with the people whose livelihoods and businesses are now being destroyed. Uh, will the minister undertake to publish and share it with all those who are affected? If this assessment justified such a drastic change of policy for shooting, presumably DEFRA requested similar assessments for other activities that occur also on special protected areas. For example, did ministers request assessments on water bird feeding events, seabird tourism events, bird watching events, such as the call to come and see two wonderful bee eaters at Trimmingham? which had attracted more than 15,000 bird watchers. Fantastic, but it must have carried a, a risk of transmitting AI. Furthermore, public access to the coastal path and bird rigging activities all carry a risk of transmitting AI. If ministers didn't request assessments for these activities, will the minister explain why shooting was singled out? I am told that the decision to change the policy was made as late as the 12th of April, when it should have happened many, many months before. But shooting organisations were not informed for over a month. I am also told that civil servants were under an explicit instruction not to communicate any changes to the shooting organisations ahead of time. And I wonder if this was an instruction from officials or ministers. The House will want to know what the impact on shoots are, so let me give some examples of DEFRA's decisions. One of our colleagues told me this week of a sh syndicate shoot rented by working men in the north that has been the only shoot in the area to protect nesting hen harriers for years has been refused a licence. A community shoot operating around, uh, around military firing range, ranges involving veterans, some of whom have PSTD, uh, and woke, welcome the social engagement that the shoot provides, also refused a licence. And here are some quotes from what some people who run shoots have said. First, disaster. We have a first day shooting on the 20th of October. No chance the birds will be hardy and fit. We will have to refund guns £14,000. Second, an unsustain unsustainable loss for us and court action with suppliers and possibly death by gassing for a lot of healthy birds. Third, believing an October release date will be, work, will be a workable solution for any shoot just shows the lack of knowledge and understanding that people processing these licences have. Shoots will be forced to close, leading to catastrophic consequences, not only to jobs and businesses in these areas, but also to conservation. Fourth, it will bankrupt the shoot. Two game keepers will lose their jobs, not just practical at all. Now, Mr Speaker, given that these people had a legitimate expectation that DEFRA would honour its promises to engage early and consult with the industry, that they had a legitimate expectation when they ordered the birds that the licensing regime would not change, will the Minister commit to providing compensation to these shoots that have and will lose entirely because of DEFRA's decisions? The Minister will know that I and many of my colleagues sought assurances on numerous occasions that this problem will be sorted out, and were given those assurances, which I very much regret the necessity to say have not been honoured. 
In the light of this and the catalogue of mistakes and injustice, will the Minister not take the obvious decision that addresses the problem that they have created for themselves and others and immediately renew the General Licence 43 for all shoots uh, located on special protected areas? This General Licence has subsisted for decades and I can't quite see why we needed to alter it at this juncture. Secondly, Mr Deputy Speaker, I would like to raise an urgent issue of the higher level stewardship scheme, which a number of my farming constituency have contacted me about in the last week. The deadline is approaching for many to transfer to the higher level stewardship scheme uh, from the higher level stewardship scheme and apply for the new mid tier countryside stewardship scheme. The main difficulty is to complete the application is that the Rural Payments Agency and DEFRA website is not functioning properly in relation to the new scheme. So to exacerbate the delays in moving to the new scheme, the RPA is providing little to no communication with those farmers who have got queries of how to apply for them, meaning that desperate constituents applying for a deadline are contacting my office for health and support. The deadline for many is coming up in the middle of the next month, and I urge the Department to provide <coughs> communication and support required to help those trying to transition to the new schemes, as they have been advised to do. Mr Deputy Speaker, this is causing great consternation for my constituency farmers, and no doubt many other farmers up and down the country, at their busiest harvest time of year. In view of these communication problems with the RPA, would the Minister consider delaying the deadline for applications to the mid-tier countryside stewardship scheme. This seems to me only fair, that, considering the difficulties that they are having with communicating with the RPA. In closing, Mr Deputy Speaker, may I wish you, Mr Speaker, colleagues and all our very hard-working staff and the hard-working staff in the House a happy and a chance to recharge their batteries during the forthcoming recess. Around. Yeah.